Hallelujah. Y'all pray for me. I may have to write it down. If my voice is going to hold up here, and I know it is in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I want you to go with me today. If you got your Bibles, I want you to go to Exodus 2. Exodus, the second chapter. And we're going to begin in verse 1. And before we read that, I just want to, want to kind of set up where we want to go this morning. It was a very, very hard time in Egypt. And we all know the story of Joseph and how he went through everything, sold into slavery, and God had him put aside to save his family. And he became king, and then he died. And that brings us up to where we are. And then there was a new king who came, and the Bible says that he didn't know Joseph. So he didn't know anything about Joseph. Or what he stood for. All he saw when he became king was the children of Israel and how prosperous they were and how they had grown in number and how mighty they were and how prosperous they were. And so he decided we're going to have to do something about them because if war breaks out here and they take sides with the enemy, they'll defeat us and they'll take our kingdom. So he called the midwives together and he said, every boy child that's born, throw him in the river, kill him. We don't want no, no more uh, soldiers raised up here. So we're going to start right now. We're going to get rid of them. Every boy child, throw him in the river. Every girl child, let her live. So that's where we are. And all this was going on about this time. Chapter 2 of Exodus, verse 1. And there went a man of the house of Levi and took to wife a daughter of Levi. And the woman conceived and bare a son. And when she saw him that he was a goodly child, she hid him three months. And when she could not longer hide him, she took for him an ark of bulrushes and daubed it with slime and with pitch, and put the child therein. And she laid it in the flags, or in the reeds, by the river's brink. And his sister stood afar off to wit, or to watch what would be done to him. And the daughter of Pharaoh, and I want you to know, for those of you who don't know, Pharaoh was the new king. The daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river and her maidens walked along by the riverside. And when she saw the ark among the flags, she sent her maid to fetch it. And when she opened it, she saw the child and behold, the babe wept. And she said, had compassion on him and said, this is one of the Hebrews' children. Then said his sister to Pharaoh's daughter. You see, the sister was standing off to the side to wait to see what was going to happen to her little baby brother. And when, Pharaoh, when the Pharaoh's daughter's baby took the baby out and it cried, she went running to her and said, do you want me to go? Uh, and the maid went and called the child's mother. She said, then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, shall I go and call to thee a nurse of the Hebrew women that she may nurse the child for thee. And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. And the maid went and called the child's mother. And Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, Take this child away and nurse it for me, and I will give thee thy wages. And the woman took the child and nursed it. And the child grew. And she brought him unto Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. And she called his name Moses. And she said, because I drew him out of the water. I want to talk to you this morning about God's layaway plan. God's layaway plan. God had a plan. God always has a plan. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, I know the plans that I have for you. I want to tell you this morning, don't worry. God's got a plan. No matter where you are, what's going on in your life, He's got a plan. It may be a layaway plan. It might not be 
an instant redemption. It might be a layaway plan. And I want you to understand that as she hid this child, they lived in slave houses. Tiny, tiny shacks. Slave houses. How it was a pure miracle how she hid this baby for three months. That they didn't hear him cry. How she was able to hide him. But she saw she couldn't hide him anymore. And you remember the king's order that every boy child would be thrown into the river. I want you to realize this morning when she decided she couldn't hide him anymore, the very thing that Satan had used to destroy life with. Thank you, baby. The very thing that he had used to destroy life with is where she went with her baby. And she put him in the reeds of the bull or the grass for the ones of you that don't know what that is. There was some grass there. And this was like the Nile River. There was all kinds of snakes and, and gators and all kinds of stuff. And they had been, been throwing babies in there. So what would make her think that something wouldn't take her child? But she trusted God. And she made a little, a little boat, if you would, and put him in it and stuck him there. And so he was found, and, and when he became Pharaoh's daughter's son, I looked up reference to that, and that means he became part of the court, part of royalty. He was a Hebrew, but see, God had a layaway plan. His mama had to turn him loose. His mama had to lay him aside. His mama had to give God control and trust God. That he had a layaway plan. He said, if you'll lay him right here, if you'll just lay him right here, how many of you praying for some folks this morning? If you'll just lay him right here, I won't let no harm come to him. But I got a plan that even the enemy will call you to even cause you to be able to be in the house and nurse your own baby. And not only that, I'm Amen. 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 She was a slave. She just barely had enough to get by on. But God said, I know this is not the fullness. You haven't seen the fullness of my layaway plan yet. See, we put things in layaway because we don't have the money to pay for them right then. God puts things on layaway because it is paid for. He paid for it. God puts things on layaway because already been paid for. I just want to lay it aside for you because now's not the time. So he grew and he learned and he grew and he grew. He was in the house, in the royalty, the inner court. He was in the court. God had a plan because he knew one day he was going to kill an Egyptian and bury him. And then he fled. Forty years he spent in the wilderness. This happened when he was 40 years old. And then he went to the wilderness. For 40 years he was on the backside of nowhere. But God had a plan. Because see that same king that ordered all the boy children to be thrown into the river did not know that his own daughter was going to withdraw the layaway and named him Moses, which means drawn out. She drew out what God had paid for and laid aside, took it into her house, the very redemption that God would use to bring his people out from under that wicked king was raised in his own house, ate his own food, Raised with every privilege that he would give a child of his own. God said, I'm not only going to deliver them, I'm going to do it under your nose. <laughs> Amen. Let me tell you this morning, God's not only going to deliver you this morning. God's not only going to save them folks, but he's going to do it right in the devil's face. Amen. He can do it in the house. Amen. He can hide you. He can hide them and make it look like something else is going on. Pharaoh thought every time he seen Moses go by. I'm sure he probably looked like them. But 
that's, that's my daughter's. That's my daughter's son. She drew him out of the river out there. And what's strange to me is if you've ordered all the boy child babies to be killed, why'd you allow them to keep him? And you know it's one of them. I have to believe. This thing's choking me. <laughs> I have to believe that God pricked his heart. He used the love that he had for his own child to cause him to allow her to keep him. Amen? And raised him up in his house. Hallelujah. God has a plan. His own layaway plan this morning. Moses grew and when the children of Israel became so oppressed and pressed down and pushed down and pressed down and he was so wicked that he could not stand and Moses took it all he could because see in his heart he knew those were his people. No matter where he was raised. Let me tell you today I don't care where you go don't forget your people. Don't forget who loves you. Don't forget mom and daddy. Don't forget brother and sister. Blood is thicker than water. Amen. As the saying goes, don't forget what God has blessed you with. You stay with your family and your friends. The people who really, really love you. Amen. And so we saw them oppressed. The Egyptian was beaten up on one of the Hebrew men. And he just went out there and just killed him and buried him in the sand. And out of fear he ran. And he goes in the backs out of nowhere to a desert. But he meets Zipporah. And he marries. And he's minding his own business. And he's walking one day. He's just walking. All of a sudden he sees a bush. And it's on fire. He's in the middle of nowhere. God hadn't spoke to him. He's delivered his life. He's free. He don't, he's not dealing with all that drama going on back there. He's free. Out with the goats and the sheep. And his little wife. And he sees this bush. And it's burning. Well, to me that would be odd in the middle of the desert. Who set it afar? I don't know. But he didn't marvel at that. But when he saw that it wasn't consumed. He knew something was different, so he walked over. It's the second look. If it makes you take a second look, there's probably something there. And he walked over, and he heard God say, Moses. God knew his name already. Before she, she thought she named him. But God knew his name. He knew what she would name him. And he said, Moses, take off your shoes, for the ground you stand on is holy. And we know the story that God told him to go tell Pharaoh. This same man, his granddaddy, if you would. He's raised him. He's eat with him. He knows him and he knows how ruthless he is. He knows that he is. And they're probably looking for him because he killed an Egyptian. And he said, go tell him. Go tell Pharaoh to let my people go. God had a layaway plan. He thought when he ran, that he was away from it all. See, sometimes we think when we run, we're getting away from something, but God's got a plan. He'll meet you in the desert, honey. You can't run far enough. You can't go far enough. You can't do enough. For God, God's got a GPS that, that technology today can't touch. Amen. He knows where you are. He knows everything in you. He made you to function and to work. He knows every breath, and he's responsible for every beat of your heart. He knows where you are. And he found him. He said, I want you to go. Moses said, send somebody else. I got a speech problem. I can't, I, I, I don't want to go see God knew that he needed to go back because he was fearful. And he wanted him to go back because God wants to prove faithful to you. He wanted him to go back and face his biggest fear. He wanted him to go back because all this time he had a plan. And Moses said, I can't do this. How many of you know what I just 
said God's already paid for it. If he sends you, he'll take care of it. He was not going to allow Pharaoh to destroy him. But he wanted to do it right in his face. He said, I want to take what I laid away and what she drew out that I had paid for. I want to take you back to that place. Sometimes it's hard to witness to folks that we partied with. Like I said, sometimes God wants you to go back and say, look what God has done for me. It might be hard, but they might see something and they might turn around. Amen. He said, no, I want you to go. You go and tell him. I said, turn them loose. And after Moses had went several times, can't you imagine that he probably thought, God, why don't you do it? I keep going back and going back. What's the purpose? How many times do we pray? And ask God, and ask God, and ask God. How many times? And then we think, I've prayed until I'm tired of praying about it. Nothing's changing. Nothing's changing. And the Lord started pouring out plagues. And He hardened Pharaoh's heart. That layaway plan that he had didn't end when he laid him, when she laid him in the flagons by the river's brink. It didn't end when he fled to the wilderness out there. It was part of God's plan. It didn't end when he came back and told Pharaoh to turn them loose. It went on and he, and he, and he, and he told him, he said, turn them, turn them loose, turn them loose, turn them loose, over and over and over. And finally, when death came, when death came, God said, I'm going to send you back. He said, this last time, see, God knows what it'll take. He knows what it takes to get the job done. If you don't listen the first time, he'll send something else. And he'll send something else. And he'll send something else. He's got a layaway plan for your life. He's got it laid away. Everything he's paid for for you to have is laid away for you to draw it out when it's time. He said, go one more time. And he didn't listen. And he said, you go tell my people, listen to me this morning. The blood of Jesus will cover everything. Everything. He said, you go tell my people to apply. I won't go into all the, the killing the the lambs and the, all that kind of stuff. But he said, you go go tell them tonight the death angel's going to pass through. He's going to pass through. And there's going to be sorrow in this land like has never been before. But you tell my people when the death angel sees the blood over the doorpost. Hallelujah. He's going to pass over you and spare you. You do it just like this, just like this, and just like this, and you apply it over the doorpost. And when the death angel passes, you stay in your house. Don't come out. Don't come out till morning. Stay where God tells you to stay. Don't be out in the street. Don't be out running around with some of them some of them Egyptians over there. You better not be out running around when the death angel passes. Amen. He said, stay in your house and apply the blood over the doorpost. Hallelujah. That ought to make everybody in here that's saying jump and shout this morning because the blood has been applied to my life. Amen. He has to pass over. If the Lord says so, he has to pass over. And they did. And they began to hear the cries like they'd never heard before. Can you imagine how that was? And Pharaoh said, let them go. Turn them loose. Let them go. Get out. And not only did they get out, but he said, Send, give them what they need. And said they took everything that the Egyptians had. They took all their jewels. Everything they had. They got out. Amen. I said the other day, when the jail breaks, you better get out. When it's time to get out, when the door swings open, you need to get up and get gone. Amen. They didn't waste no time. They didn't even put leaven in their bread. They took off when it was time. They took off and they left. God used that layaway baby, that little tiny baby that she felt sorry for. She did not know 
that he was going to raise up and be a mighty, mighty, mighty instrument for God. This baby right here, you do not know, this is God's level. Every one of us is God's level plan. Let me tell you, every one of us has a mission. Every one of us has a plan. God has a plan for us to be effective for his kingdom. Every single one of us, he has a plan. You don't know what she'll do. You don't know what he'll do. You don't know what God's plan is. See, what looks like one thing will be another. Amen? What looks like bad will be good. But God has it all paid for. And they come out and they started out and they ran and they just, just left by the thousands, by the thousands. In the middle of the night, they left. And Moses let them out. He said, let's get out of here. And, and, and I would dare to say that he probably thought, all right, we're good now. We out. Little did he know. God still had him in the layaway plan. Still, after that, after all of that, went through circumcisions, went through generations, 40 years, because they complained and they griped and they growled and they mumbled. And Moses had to put up with that for 40 years out there. But God had a plan. If you're tired this morning of the way things are and it just seems like nothing ever matches up, nothing ever works out, it just seems like it's always something and you don't understand why you're in a layaway plan. If you belong to God, you're in a layaway plan this morning and don't worry about it. You ain't got to make payments. You ain't got to do nothing. Live for God. Trust Him. And at the right time, at the right time, the withdrawal will be made because it's paid for. And you never know. You never know where that's coming from. You never know. It may just be the devil himself who causes you to come out and be what you were born to be. Amen? It may take everything that could come against you and you may feel like that this morning. But you see, God wants to bring out of you what He's put in there. He wants to pull that out of you. You see, Moses couldn't have led the children of Israel to that desert if he hadn't been there first. <clears throat> the fear that caused him to run to the desert. He spent 40 years in the place that he was going to have to leave them to. So he learned while he was there. He learned how to survive. He learned where to go and where not to go. What cactus you could drink from and what which one not to. I imagine he had a lot of life lessons he had to learn in 40 years and probably thought, I have no idea what my life's supposed to be about. Here I am, 80 years old. What's it about? And then all of a sudden, one day, God showed up. He said, I believe you're ready now. I believe you're ready. I believe I've taught you a few things. How many of you think God's taught you a few things in life? He has taught me plenty. And I've still got way more than that to go. But he has a plan for you. If you want to know what it is this morning, I want you to stand as they come to the music.